ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Gray here with Coach John Olive for the John Olive Fifth Quarter Show, and we are on a Saturday morning after retaining the coffee pot. Yes, it's always good to have the coffee yes, pot sir. in Tallahoma. And for the folks that the folks that didn't come to the game, uh, John, give us a little history on the this uh, the Great American Rivalry Series. Uh, we got contacted, I guess it was five years ago, and um, anyway, the Great American Rivalry Series is an organization out of Lexington, Kentucky that goes around the country picking rivalries, mm -hmm. and um, like Maryville Alcoa's in that series over in East Tennessee, and uh, they pick um, places that where the rivalry has gone on for a long time. Somebody nominated us for this, and I really don't know. It may have been Coach Sikowski when he was at Coffee. But um, anyway, uh, two things that are important out of it that I think are important. They try to get the student body involved. Is there's a right. chin-up contest that's done during the week. Uh, the other thing is, is they present a scholarship to a scholar athlete. Last night, Brian Nims was our representative, but um, anyway, An that's one of the re man. that's the main reason that uh, that I have agreed to mm -hmm. to do it is because they're gonna send some money to whatever school Brian goes to, and. Um, to help pay for his college education. And it's, it's sponsored by the year. Marines. Uh, it is, and it's a partnership with the Marines. Yeah, that's and a good so, uh, anyway, that's a little bit of the history on it. Uh, we have been a part of this series four out of the last five years now. Um, and not real sure how it works, but you got to have a sponsor for that area. And last year we didn't have a sponsor. This year we did. Uh, 2015, 16, 17, there was a sponsor there, so we were all part of it. So this is our fourth time to be a part of the Great American Rivalry well, Series. It, it was fun to watch, and, and what they did that, you know, I was sitting, there were some people behind me that had, hadn't been to one of those games in a long time, and the helicopter comes in, and he said, What is this? And I said, well, they're, deli they're delivering the game balls. And he said, what? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Who's paying for this? <laughs> and all of a sudden, the thing drops down, and the the, the somebody gets out of each side of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it was uh, probably not the pilot, probably no. the passenger, and in helmet and uniform and walks over and presents the balls to a representative from each each school right. and then gets back in their helicopter and takes off and the same person who said this is looked and said well that's one of the coolest things I've ever seen <laughs> so uh, you know it's just interesting the, the things that go along to go with that and it was it was a fun evening uh, as far as I know there was not any confrontation no. other than what's supposed to happen on a football field which we took care of quite well it was nice that's the reason the pot's back here. <laughs> so what we'll do right now is take a quick commercial break and be back with the first quarter of the 2019 Coffee Pot Game. No, I mean, in a way. Mustang whole... Sally, you better slow that Mustang down at Russell Barnett Ford and Tullahoma on Highway 55, where you can receive up to $4,000 off original MSRP. That's Russell Barnett, Ford and Tullahoma. And remember, my question is, why buy anywhere else? Thank you, Dr. Colin Bills, for once again covering the Wildcats football game. In addition to his sideline presence, Dr. Bills with Tenova Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is offering an injury clinic every Saturday morning from 9 to 12 throughout this fall season for athletes of all ages. Located at Suite 300 of the Jackson Medical Plaza, 1805 North Jackson Street. Whether you've experienced a sprain or more serious injury, you no longer have to wait until Monday to see an orthopedic physician. Thanks again to Nova Orthopedics for your support and go Wildcats. Terry Stroop here with Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. We've had a long, hot summer. It's football time here in Tullahoma, and with that comes fall weather. It's a great time for you to schedule your fall maintenance checks so we can help keep you comfortable. <laughs> Stroop's 
Strupsacker Refrigeration would like to congratulate the class of 2020. Don't stop believing, Tullahoma. Faithfully, Tullahoma Parks and Rec is excited to welcome back Journey Resurrection, a Journey tribute band that will perform free for the public Friday, September the 6th at Fraser McEwen Park at 7 p.m. The wheel in the sky will keep on turning, so bring your chairs and blankets. Cold drinks and food will be on hand, and you can have it any way you want it. We'll see you there, rain or shine. Resurrection, a Journey tribute band in Tullahoma. Friday, September 6th at Fraser McEwen Park. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. I need to say a big thank you. You were talking about things making ball games special. Uh, the Coffee County Sheriff Department gave us an escort all the way from school to the stadium with the help of the Tullahoma Police Department here inside our city limits. Um, it probably takes about 10 to 12 minutes out of a trip when you're trying to get two buses through all those red right, lights and right. stuff. And, uh, and it makes it special for the young men. They'll remember that. It makes it special, uh, makes T-Town just a special place to be. Well, it makes a little bit of difference too when you have a sheriff that's from Tullahoma. So anyway, it was just good. I appreciate Jason Den being the sheriff department for doing that. Our captains last night, uh, number six, Hunter Palmer's the per permanent captain. And then we had three Manchester guys, Jake Hollinsworth, uh, Jacob Floyd and Nick White. And so anyway, game starts, we wanted the ball, we got the ball, uh, Hunter Jewell returned it out to a good field position. We try to run Brian Nims there, and then we uh, not able to execute. We're just a little too nervous here, I think. We, we don't execute real well here at the beginning. Good run by Brian. It's way to run through some of those arm tackles, and he picks up the first down. Make a little bit of a drive there, pick up a first down, but then we're gonna uh, not be able to move the ball and not sure exactly. You know, we were a little, just out of kelter here at the very first. We didn't calm down and play a whole lot better as the game goes along. Uh, Boy, Hunter was wide open out there. He was, and Ben just over, overshot him. Um, and then here, trying to get the ball out to Jacoby, and very fortunate that that didn't get ruled as a lateral. Um, probably should have been. And then have trouble. We, we had trouble with our kicking game all the way around last night. It was. Uh, we've got three really good kicker punters. We've got a couple of deep snappers and the result of that was good though. It is. Uh, Will Stone did a good job of putting it down in there inside the 10, uh, scooping up the bad snap there. So Nick White on the tackle. Nick's got a little bit of quickness, doesn't he? And well, we the, had him, but had him to outrun us there, but they're going to get called for holding as Cooper Lawson catches up to him. Thought Cooper played another good, solid ball game again. Second down all over, and they snap the ball, I think, without the quarterback being ready, and he throws it away. Um, they had linemen downfield, so we declined that penalty to make it third down. They're going to come running out of there again. And Haney's a little faster than, you know, he's a good little running back. And so anyway, they don't get the first down. They do get off their goal line. And 
We let the ball hit there as Jacoby had gotten too deep and couldn't get back up to that one. And so if he'd been where he needed to be, that one would have been taken over at the 43, as he would have fair called it. Again, uh, not throwing things on time, but uh, good, good catch there by Quentin Howard. That was an incredible catch. Uh, and then we, we have a really <coughs> unique series here. We're going to get offside, so it's first and 15. But if you look over there across the way, it says second down. <laughs> and this is going to get everybody messed up. And uh, we try to hit Q there on the corner route. So now it should be second down. But if you looked at it, it said third down. We're going to run Brian Nelms right here. Good job blocking. And now it should be first down. They've moved the chains, but it still says third, third down. down. <laughs> <coughs> All right. And so we pick up two, two and a half yards there. And now it says fourth down when it should be second, second down <laughs> and eight. It's fourth and eight. And uh, so Ben's on hit, Jay Collinsworth here, Jake's on make the catch. So we get the first down, but I'm over there. I'm saying, wait a minute, how's that happening? And uh, by that time, we snapped it and picked up the first down. And run Brian Nims, good job, good hole. We're picking up five or six at a clip. And we're taking it down the field. And again, we, we've got some good yardage, but we lose the football. We yeah. didn't protect the football. Brian's got to keep that ball high and tight. Two arms over it when he's in traffic. Quarterback's going to keep it here. If I remember right, it's Garrett Harris that hit him first. Going to host the Wildcats. We had him in the backfield, and he evades us, and Tyreek runs him down after missing him the first time. Third and short. And we right hit him in the backfield, but he's on to get enough yardage there for a first down. First and ten. And they're running a, their form of a boot. We're in pretty good situation uh, coverage-wise. In fact, we're in a real good situation. Coop's all over the guy that they want to throw the ball to. Uh, quarterback keeps it, though, for a four or five-yard gain. They don't come back and run a version of an option there. Uh, they pick up the first down, so they got two first downs, got it off their goal line. They, I, I don't think they ever put together more than two first downs. Good job right there. That was Logan Crouch that uh, his man pulled, and he got right in his pocket and sitting there. Uh, great job. Ian Poe recognizes screen. Every screen that he's in the game on, he recognizes. You watch number 70. Uh, he figures it out. Good coverage there. Got three white jerseys to one red jersey, and balls having to be thrown high. Make them punt it again here. And this time, you know, he, not punting he got, it quite He got as talked to about the last time. Well, we moved him up. He, he just got too deep the first time. And that one, uh, even though we had moved him up. Uh, Boy, he's tenacious. And that's the way to run with the football there. And, you know, they hem him in to the sideline finally. Uh, I really thought at halftime he and I were talking about it and said, you got to put your foot in the ground and make the cut back. But after watching the video, they would have gotten him either way. Good job. He evades, <coughs> makes the first man miss, and gets six yards there. Um, later, later on in the game, he drags about four of them 15 yards. Yep. Played a great ball. Ryan Scott. 
picks up three or four yards, and we got a third and short right here. Now, is this young man, is he a sophomore? Sophomore. And, uh, hands the ball off to Devlin McGee, and Devlin, hey, Devlin follows inside. those linemen into the end zone and scores. He's is he a, a sophomore? So he's, he's a senior. He's a senior. And Ben will put it down. Justice Chadwick with Sam Poteet snapping, puts it through, and we have scored to go up 7-0, and eating a lot of clock. Whole first quarter. Felt like we should have had two scores right there, but uh, we at least had gotten one score and so forth. Justice Chadwick has to make the tackle there, and so Coffee County takes over in good shape. They're out to the 42-yard line. Times. Great job here by Hunter Jewell. They try to run a quick screen out there, and they get zero yards, <laughs> and that's the way to react to what you see. You know, uh, Coach, as, as we've said so many times, there's, there's – all kinds of people it takes to make this program work mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of folks to thank and while he's standing here before he leaves i want to thank bob lamoya he's in this morning and he's the videographer and has been for years and gives us the film that we have and uh he's very professional about the way he goes about his business and we just, we just appreciate Bob. He stays up after the ball game and goes through the film and edits it and everything and gets it ready for the show in the morning. And That's exactly comes. right. And he and Terry Daniel now have probably worked for together for five or six years, right. maybe a little longer. Uh, very seldom do I have to do, when we, what they call checkerboard, the side shot with the end zone shot. Now, Terry runs the end zone camera. He does the end zone camera. Very seldom do we have to make any movement. Uh, today I did have to make movement, but it was something I, I've never seen it before. Uh, Bob, it took uh, Terry's uh, shot of uh, Brody Melton's touchdown and put it all the way at the end of the stack. For you guys that know what we're talking, don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Bob's over there, so I was telling it because uh, the video stacks in there in digital form, and uh, and so anyway, most of the time they match up exactly the same. But uh, a the second touchdown of the game, and that probably doesn't mean anything to anybody else. Second touchdown of the thing is the very last stack. It's the last shot of the stack. I've never seen it before. We need to go to work. Yeah, we're going to go to <laughs> Y'all don't care about that, but we thank Mr. Lemoyne um, and all the other folks that, that helped make this program. What a great program. We'll be right back. Since 1889, Traders Bank has been helping our neighbors realize their dreams. Whether our customers are looking to put a roof over their heads, try their hand at entrepreneurship, or see themselves behind the wheel of a shiny new car. The folks at Traders Bank have always been ready to dive in with them. Because at Traders, we lend you more than just money. We lend you our good name. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. La Fiesta Bar and Grill, located at 1410 North Jackson Street at the Quality Inn. The La Fiesta offers the freshest and best presented Mexican dishes in the area. 
The recently remodeled restaurant offers you all of your favorites from chips and salsa to chicken, steak, and seafood dishes. There's a fiesta going on every day at La Fiesta Bar and Grill, 1410 North Jackson Street, Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Good job there, Nick White. His first one to the ball. And again, good coverage. Jacoby almost picked it off. He got his hands on it. But what I liked about it, there's three white shirts right. around one red top. And this time we're not going to have a chance to get the ball. Take over though in great field position. Our own 48. It was coming back in our direction anyway on that one. And, Good cut there, but then he needed to keep going. Made one cut too many. And he'll learn from that. Be slowly or utilizing him at running back. Wow. He's a fighter. And he'll get better. Offensive line uh, will improve as this game goes along. We kind of get caught with um, them changing their defensive front on us. Uh, we're trying to make some adjustments to some young linemen. situation there you just there's a fine line in between pulling it down and running it and stepping forward and throwing it yeah. and you know not easy it's not an easy thing and we just gotta work to get a little bit better uh, second half we're a whole lot better gotta get there make the play Jacob Floyd finally catches him Here they're going to try to do a speed sweep. Now, Jacoby doesn't make the tackle there. Uh, Jacob does, but Jacoby blows the play up. Yeah. Now they're going to come back off that play and try to hit nine down the seam, and Cooper Lawson's right where he's supposed to be. So good job by the defense and get the ball back. Cooper's the last of the Lawson boys, isn't he? He is. That's that's sort of like the Stroops and the Hazards. It's hard to see those family things go. Uh, Stroops have now got the next generation coming through. I hope we get to see every one of them. Good job. O-line coming off right there. Brian Nims running the football hard. Good job. Way to drag them. We'll run Brian again right here, and this time we don't get number 58 
blocked, and so he makes the tackle. We're gonna come back right here and hit Brody Melton for the touchdown as he juggles and keeps his eyes on the ball though and had enough courage to keep watching for the football and not worrying about who's coming to hit him. I can't believe Brody Melton's playing high school football. So he's still supposed to be a foot and a half or two feet tall. <laughs> he is a growing young man. And uh, saw Sam, Sam. I was glad to see Sam. Pote snaps it. Ben Fulton puts it down and Justice Chadwick puts it through. So we're up 14-0. Some things are clicking and some things aren't clicking. It's yeah, still not we're, we're right not, there. We're not clicking. We'll click in the second half <clears throat> uh, the way we need to, but we're not clicking. We kicked the ball out of bounds there. Um, so they're going to get the ball at 35. And we go inside the blocker there, which lets the quarterback get outside and around us. So he picks up about seven or eight yards. Running back, puts his foot in the ground, picks up a couple more yards there to get the first down. And they try to throw the ball down the middle of the field there. Good call by them. They called us playing man coverage. And um, they're not able to pitch and catch. Here comes their version of the option, and we're all <coughs> over it. Uh, Hurry. Again, Hunter Jewell didn't make the tackle, but he blows the play up. Right. And Hunter had a great Turns it back in time. to where others do make the tackle. Here's screen again. I'm sorry, I was off there. Uh, they go back to number nine. And again, Cooper Lawson right there with him. Ooh, that was almost blocked. And so. We'll take over. We'd like to get another score on the board here before halftime. Throw the ball to Hunter Jewell. Hunter's going to make a good run. Uh, so we've got Hunter, the ball. Hunter grew a little bit since last year, hadn't he? He's a little heavier. Try to run a quick screen here to Jacoby and just good job by Coffee County. And then we get too aggressive and cost ourselves. And it was a dead ball penalty, so we lose the down as well. And here we got a touchdown if we pitch and catch. And uh, they're bringing a blitz off the outside. We never see the blitz coming. And so, you know, at that situation, if you don't get a blocker to see him, your quarterback needs to see him, and yeah. uh, we'll learn from it. If, if we had released the ball uh, on time, instead of waiting for the receiver to become wide open, if we had laid it up where he was headed to, we would still got it out of there. And uh, gives us stuff we definitely got to work on. And we struggle with the snap and catch again. Uh, and we don't end up with a very good punt. As pressure was all over in there. And people are going to start coming after it if we don't get a lot cleaner. And so yeah. we're going to have to get a whole lot cleaner than what we've been. Cooper. Good job by Cooper. Cooper picks off the ball. And. Uh, so they give the ball right back to us. We're a long ways away from the goal line. And couldn't find anybody open, so we run. They shouldn't be a whole lot of time left. Yeah, and then we get a holding call. So we just shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, it's, it's under two minutes. 
Uh, Brian Nims again great rips off a good run and great job blocking by the line again. Same play and we rip them again. Wow. Yeah, that's some um, great blocking. And then on this one, we miss one block, and that's the only thing that keeps it from ripping them again. Uh, if we'd have made one more block right there, we'd have been ripping them again. And this time we miss a block on that guy uh, coming up the middle. We get a, we do make a completion for a throw and catch to Hunter Jewell, but we get called for holding. Once Ben sprints outside the pocket, that creates. An I've been I've been trying to protect because he's inside <coughs> me, and yeah. all of a sudden the guy right in front of me is now trying to take off to the outside, and you just end up with a bunch of holding mm -hmm. calls when that happens. Yeah, we had what about in the second half one time we had about three in a row out on that flat pass. Uh, two, uh, two in a two row. In a row yeah. yeah, we had well we had a block in the back and we had a holding call. Had well, a like you say, had when a somebody tackle. turns had on a you, tackle. <laughs> <laughs> but when somebody that turns on you, it's hard. There. It's hard to stop. Well, yeah, and, and the block in the back, the the receiver that got that one, it was a hustle. Just got to have enough discipline about us. Here, and I thought we were on, I mean, I yeah. thought we had a touchdown. I thought we were going to get it and um, just under threw it a little bit. Uh, so, not hitting on all cylinders, but we're up 14 0, and at halftime, we're basically, you know, trying, especially on the offensive side. The defensive side didn't have to make many adjustments at all, but offensively, we're talking about what we got to do blocking wise. Uh, we're talking to the quarterbacks about you got to take advantage of what they're giving you and so forth and that's what we'll do. And, and y'all just did that at, in the end zone. In the end zone. And then go back to the bus or locker room. Right. We would only go back up there to the locker room but it uh, had issues. We were having issues in those locker rooms so we decided to stay down there on the yeah. grass and yeah. that, that was Better nice than night. trying to go over there behind the building uh, where the old locker room is. We just decided to stay right out there, and uh, it's a pretty nice area. And yeah, so. it, was a, it was a great night for football. Yeah. Weather was great. Hey, we want to thank some people right now. We want to thank the folks down at the Donut Palace for being our, bringing us, uh, letting us get those good old sweet donuts. Coach and I enjoy that, and our staff does, and the players, and whoever comes. We want to thank uh, Sundrop, Deja Blue. That's uh, that great Sundrop bunch down there. They're a water sponsor for the John Olive Fifth Quarter Show, and. Uh, we want to remind you about the Legacy Creamery, that is the Grove family's creamery, and uh, when you buy some of their gelato or any of their products, the profit for that goes toward the, uh, the construction of a facility at the high school for Eli Grove Foundation. The Eli Grove Foundation for the construction of a sports uh, training facility at Tullahoma High School. So we love, we love Tony and Cassie, they're great people, and this is something that we all need to do as participate in this and, and with those things said we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with the uh with the band show halftime attention attention telehoma and surrounding areas spinelli's pizzeria is now open at 121 northwest atlantic street in downtown telehoma they specialize in philadelphia style pizzas that you can order by the pie or by the gigantic slice. Spinelli's also has great sandwiches with breads imported from Philly, loaded stromboli, salads and desserts. They are open from 11 a.m. until 3 a.m. with delivery every day. So stop by Spinelli's and get a slice.
Hey, Telahoma, stop by McMurr's for all your personal and business needs. Copying and finishing service. That's black and white and color copying, one to a thousand. Scan, print, reduce, enlarge up to 36 inches. Brochures, carbonless forms, design services, foam core mounting, fax service, comb and coil binding, lamination up to 40 inches. Wedding services include wedding invitations, wedding programs, and napkins. That's McMurr's, 101 West OG Street, Telahoma. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. McMurr's. The choices we make today will impact tomorrow. Choosing natural gas today is the responsible energy choice for your home, your family, and our environment. Almost all natural gas we use is produced right here in North America. And with plentiful gas reserves, we can enjoy a safe and reliable energy future. Natural gas. The comfortable and responsible energy choice for today and tomorrow. Brought to you by Elk River Public Utility District. Donuts. Mmm. Tasty. Your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network.
If you're looking for fuel, food, or fun, don't forget the Dameron Brothers stores. The Short Stop has fuel, food, and beverages. The Liquor Locker carries all of your favorite brands of wines and spirits. It has party supplies, beverages, and the area's best selection of premium cigars. So for all your party needs, Jeff and Jay say, come on by, and thank you for the support of our businesses. Since 1917, Builder Supply has been the place to go for all your building materials. It's where the contractors have shopped for years. Builder Supply stocks quality Benjamin Moore paint, Tamco shingles, case knives, DeWalt, Stanley, and Makita tools, peach trees, southern roads, and sun windows, traders, grills, quick set locks, general shell brick, yellow wood, and pass load nail guns and nails. Experienced salespeople are there to help you find the right products for your job. So when you're ready to build, whether large or small, think Builder Supply. 301 South Atlantic Street in Tallahoma. The Gondola, located at 412 East Carroll Street, is Tallahoma's oldest pizza, pasta, and steakhouse, featuring all kinds of pizzas, calzones, pastas, and steaks, chicken, pork, sandwiches, and seafood. Check out their daily specials on Facebook. And don't forget that on Saturdays, there's ribs and smoked Boston butts. Add a great variety of appetizers and desserts, and come on in, y'all. Gondola has it all. For carryout, call 455-9738. That's the Gondola Steakhouse, located at 412 East Carroll Street in Tallahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Coffee County is on a choose to receive the ball. We had uh, two goals coming out, start the third quarter. Number one, get the ball back from Coffee County as quick as possible. We'd like it to be three downs and out. Good job. Good tackle them. by yeah. Jacob Dixon. And then uh, when the offense gets the ball, take it down the field and score. And that's what we're going to do. <coughs> Close. Hunter Palmer runs him out of bounds after a gain of five. And going to try to throw it deep here. And Too deep. Quentin Howard on the coverage. He overthrows his receiver. They don't come back. Same thing, except this time they're going to run a screen. Watch 70 figure it out. Now, can't get there, but he figured it out. And he does get in on the <laughs> yeah, tackle. Got there. He does one later in the fourth quarter. Uh oh, got a cramp. Hammy. Got a cramp. Quarterbacks on keep it. Backside in. Brian Nims makes the stop. Sniffed that out too, didn't he? Uh, come back. Trying to, I'm not sure what they were trying Boom, to throw, job, but they end up job. dropping it off to nine there, and Hunter Jewell makes the play. And then they they catch us right there. We we get caught with a stunt, and they're running a screen, and uh, they try to draw us off sides. It's not nobody flinches or anything, and they'll take a timeout here and end up punting the ball to us. Um, but anyway, that last play, good call by them. Um, called us uh, with nobody covering the back swing in there. And they're having problems as well with their snap. So it was just one of those nights. Uh, Jacoby catches it, doesn't let the ball roll, so we take over at the 30. 
Yeah, that saves 10 or 15 yards every time. And we open up, just a little quick screen there to Hunter Palmer. He picks up three or four. Come back, run Brian there, and we've got a third down and two. And we're gonna get a miscommunication here, but Ben follows the running back. So we're gonna end up picking up the first down. You can see that running back went one way, Ben went the other, and Ben was at least smart enough to use him follow, as a blocker. <laughs> follow that running back. Follow follow where the linemen are blocking for the play to go. There you go. And we there come back, is. run Brian, good move there. He makes somebody miss and he we can't hold on to the football. No, uh, and that one I'll give a little bit of credit to the defense. You can't see it on this angle. Uh, I thought he had the ball down low again because he's got a tendency to do that, but he actually had the ball in pretty good shape. And the kid just put his helmet right on the ball. Yeah. And uh, just hit the back of the ball and popped it forward. Uh, Could have been a little tighter to his body, but anyway. We ended Quentin up Howard picks it up. We're going to turn the ball and throw it to Hunter Jewell, and he makes a couple of them miss. And uh, probably should have put his shoulder down there and just truck number two right on into the end zone. <laughs> he watched too much, too much college and professional yeah. ball there. Uh, Hunter was a lot bigger. Uh, we were going to sneak it. And two years of Ben running quarterback sneaks, that's the first time we mishandled a snap. And uh, so anyway. He's been a great player for us. We'll come back right here, and he's going to keep it up coming out the backside. And so we get a touchdown. And so defense got the ball back for us. Offense is taking it down the field and scored, which is what we ask them to do. Uh, that was our two goals for the start of the third quarter. And we got them done. And Justice Chadwick puts it through, and we're up 21-0. Uh, did not want to leave them any hope right there of making a comeback. And uh, just the beginning of this half. As the offense is going to get to clicking pretty good. In spite of. Fran, <coughs> Fran asked states. me last night, sitting up there, she said, well, uh, does the second team get to play? And I said, honey, this team is all everybody's first and second team. <laughs> they, we swap people in. John swaps people in and out all night long, depending on the situation. That's correct. We've got two sets of defensive ends that are playing. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't have a lot of young secondary people play. Uh, defensive tackles are rotating. Uh, I think uh, Caden Bradford's in there right now, it looks like to me, from his stance. Uh, good job yeah. there. Uh, Tyreek Nard, junior defensive end. Got the potential to be really, really good. And there we go again. Quarterback tries to keep it on their option. And uh, good job by the D. Shut them down, get the ball back. Get the ball back, punt time. And again, even though we were up pretty tight, the ball still would have been a tough catch. So he was headed in the wrong direction. Still got the ball in good field position. And here we go again. Get that ball out there to the outside. And great job running. And we get called for that block in the back right there. Yeah, and good hustle by Jake. Jake's. Block that guy and chasing him and, you know, hit Brody Melton here. Now we got a takedown there. And so, you know, <laughs> that one hurt a little bit more. Uh, just uh, you can't do that. Good job by little Chris McCreary. And uh, he picks up the first down. Good cut. Good acceleration by Chris. He has come a long ways from last year to this year. And uh, we think the future's bright for that young man. He seems to have field sense. He does. 
And uh, there it is. And we set them up there. We've been throwing the short Watch stuff. This. Here's the one I was talking about earlier. Look at this. That that is a man child right there. Kobe drags them down to the six. Good pitch and catch. Good run. Kobe coming across on the speed sweep. Good blocking out in front there. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. And we have started the third quarter the way it needed to be done. We have taken charge of the game. Matt Marcel puts it through. Make it 28-0 with less than a minute to go. And then Matt's on the kickoff right here, and he is going to absolutely pound that ball. It's on the land in the end zone several yards deep. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate uh, that we've got three, and we think we've now got a fourth one. We think we found a fourth young man that's got a really strong leg. Uh, so uh, we don't keep recruiting these soccer goalies. I want to ask you a question. Was Coach Oakley there last night? He was. I thought I recognized those legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he said he didn't have to wear slacks anymore. <laughs> he and Akildi changed legs. Akildi lose the battle. <laughs> Great job. I think that'd be, yep, Justin Scott coming through there. It was good to see Bird on the sidelines. Uh, he. Didn't, he can't miss the Manchester game, you know. That's oh, where uh, I think it was his uncle Ellie. Oh yeah, that was there for a long time, and so that's a big ball game. And his cousin Bobby was there with him, right, who played right. for Manchester right. years ago, and uh, so that's that part of what him. makes it. That's that great American rivalry right there. Yeah. Just just stuff like that. Well, folks, what we'll do right now is take another quick commercial break and be back with the fourth quarter. The wait is finally over. The all-new redesigned Ford Ranger is back at Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma. Stop and test drive one today at Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma on Highway 55, home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. And remember, my question is, why buy anywhere else? Who's eligible to join Ascend Federal Credit Union? Them. Her. Her. Him. Them. Him. All of them. Her and her and him, but not him. There's a way for you to join too. And if you live in Middle Tennessee and want to get the most out of your money, you should. Ascend Federal Credit Union. Open your account today at ascend.org. Are your teeth dull, chipped, stained, or crooked? If so, call the dental practice of Dr. Mike Long. For a wider, brighter, more attractive smile, Dr. Long offers cosmetic dentistry at its best through whitening, bonding, and veneers. Dr. Long also uses laser technology, eliminating anesthesia and drilling. When you are ready to enhance your smile, call Dr. Mike Long, family practice dentistry for 29 years. Daddy Billy's Deli Bar and Grill has been open at 119 Northwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma for over 40 years, serving up good times and great food. Owner Nick Smith has made a great investment to remodel the inside, which is now a non-smoking facility, and add a great outdoor patio area with a covered stage, a fire pit, and a second bar where smoking is allowed. The food remains great at Daddy Billy's, from burgers to paninis, salads, wings, with new items being added all the time. Be part of the good times at Daddy Billy's, 119 Northwest Atlantic Street, downtown Tullahoma. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. 
We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Coffee County opens up with a second down and long. They're gonna drop it off over here, and I think that's Hunter Jewell. Great coverage. Right where he's supposed to be. Veteran linebacker. He had a he had a really good game on both sides of the ball. We're gonna try to go deep here. And wow. Cooper Lawson ends up breaking that one up. And so they've got to punt it back to us. Number five left the game right there. I, I didn't pay attention whether it came back or not. I think he did, but I really don't know. I know I checked on him after the game. Look, here, was, look at here. Look at here. Well, and Jacob Dixon catching the ball and running toward the other goal line. They get us for a holding penalty, so you know, you back might, us up a little bit. Fans out there will probably remember his brother was uh, played quarterback for us. Yes, yeah, Chase. Uh, Chase, yeah. Good athlete. And uh, we're running Devlin there. We've got some backup linemen that have come in to play now. Uh, so it's good to start getting some other young men chances. You got Ryan Scott at quarterback. And Ryan shows that acceleration that he has and gets us into a short yardage situation. Gonna come back and run the same play and he's on pull it again. And he picks up the first down. <laughs> Smart. And this time, Chris McCreary, great move. Got past that first guy, and he picks up about five. And I thought he was on score right here. He puts his foot in the ground right there and makes a cut. And if he stays on his feet, he may have. Yeah, he's gone. Because the other two had already overrun him. Man, he was heading back toward the middle of the field. Good run, though. And then Ryan's on to keep it, and he's on go score. And I think the previous play, if Chris stayed up, he'd have done he exactly the same, same thing because I think 12 would overrun it. Yeah, but it's fun to watch your young your young ones get out there and have success. Matt Marcel puts it through, and we're up 35-0, and that makes a running clock, so that'll make this quarter end quick. really quick. <laughs> um, Matt's on kickoff again. And it's a line drive kick. Wrapping. Caden Tucker's the first one to get to him. And a host of Wildcats tackling. Do you like that line drive kick? Uh, that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I mean, it seems like to me it sort of gets down there a little bit quicker than you uh, want. It gets it, down it? there a lot quicker. There they are running the screen again, and who's going to come Ooh. hit him over there on the sideline? Big 70. That's he imposed. <laughs> he can recognize the screen. Yeah. I wish we could get a couple other defensive tackles. Great job right there, Seth Cullum. Yeah, and back uh, there with him. Who is it? Poe standing uh, right back there with him. Cullum, Seth is a young man that – he had a great week of practice. Look at there. And uh, he's difficult for our lineman to block. And he earned his way on the field because of his practice this past week. Uh, so proud of Seth. He's a young man, not nearly the size of some of them. We got to get him stronger. If we can get him strong between now and next year. Uh, he's a sophomore? He's, he's a junior. junior. Uh, but he is cat quick. And we've got full second team in there now. 
Uh, the last drive, it was a mixture. Uh, didn't get a lot of blocking that time. We got to get a little more aggressive there. And we at least make positive yardage that time. Third down. And Ryan's going to take off with it. And gets out of bounds. I think he's a little there. Uh, leaves us fourth down on about four. We don't run quarterback sweep. And he picks up the first down, but. Uh, one of our young linemen gets a penalty, so it backs us up, and we're not going to punt it. We're going to stand there and watch the clock run down. The 94th coffee pot game, I think I've been told it is, has come to 94th. an end. 94th. Yeah, as uh, Tellama Wildcats will be victorious. And, uh, congratulate to the seniors. Uh, I don't know if any of them played as freshmen in that particular ball game. Uh, probably there may have been a couple of them that did. But uh, their sophomore, junior, and senior years, they've ended up victorious yeah, in the right. coffee pot game. Very good. And so their three main years, um, they have ended up victorious. And it was, there was, you know, there was, not, like I said earlier, there was not any trouble. Not that I know of. Everybody and, was uh, cordial to each other, which is the way it should be. You know, the only thing that I saw that, and it's not any big deal, I mean, it was kind of, in the, as far as being a prank or something, uh, there were some, uh, Go Red Raider signs put out around Telahoma here, you know, uh, which that's fine. That's what it ought to be. And uh, you know, uh, as far as I know, but I that's not didn't a, hear that's anything not from them. Hanging a dead cat somewhere. That's or, correct. It, it was fine. It yeah, was good yeah. and clean. Uh, the game was clean. Uh, the uh, you know. Uh, good night for Coffee County to make some money. That, uh, I, we had, I guess, we I took a huge we had crowd. as many people there as they yeah, did. We took a good crowd over there. Uh, we pre-sold tickets for them. Um, I know that uh, they were telling me about um, one lady trying to decide whether to buy tickets for a small child or not, and she says, "Well, I guess I'll just donate this money to you all." And <laughs> They said, no, it doesn't go to us. It goes to coffee. We just do it because it helps you from having to stand in line. Oh, yeah. I was, and well, there have been went... years where you've stood in line to almost halftime to get into a ball game either here or there. So the two schools kind of work together trying to help their fans to get those tickets well, early in the week. I went around lunchtime yesterday to get tickets uh, for Fran and, and Dot and, and Max. Uh, there were cars lined up all across the front of the school. Yeah, and I went down there, and they were people. And Rhonda had a bag of money about that big. I mean, they were there. Uh, a lot of tickets were we, sold. We there. sold eight hundred, right at eight hundred tickets wow. in the pre-sale. And uh, my guess is, uh, when you put the band and all uh, there, uh, our side of the stands were full, and I'd say that's a probably a twenty-five hundred seat section yeah, over it, on it our was side. Yeah, it was full. So, it was packed. Full. Yeah. So I would say we travel well. We do. People it's enjoy good. High it was, it's football. a good environment. It's what Friday nights ought to be yeah. about. Yeah. So it was a great time, and uh, uh, appreciate though all the fans getting over there and uh, you know uh, supporting these young men. Big ball game coming up this Thursday. Yeah. We'll talk about that right after this commercial break. No commercial break. We'll talk about it right now. We'll do that. <laughs> uh, our first region game, Marshall County, comes to town. We moved it from Friday night to Thursday night, so uh, 
uh, our band got invited to go to Knoxville to be a part of the BYU Tennessee game halftime activities and so Marshall County agreed to help us out and move the ball game to Thursday night makes it a short week it's also Labor Day week which means we got to have a full practice on Labor Day instead of being able to yeah. uh, enjoy Labor Day a little bit more uh, we as coaches uh, labor well be working this today <laughs> and tomorrow trying to get things ready to go is uh, they're they undefeated they're undefeated uh, they beat Lincoln County last night 31 14 uh, they are probably they are probably the most talented team in our region they're probably the best team uh, have been four out of the last five years uh, and Coach Osteen and his staff do a great job and uh, they seem to have replenished their talent pool well. Uh, so it's if we want to be at the top of the region, it's a big, big ball game this Thursday night, 7 o'clock here at our high school home opener. Tailgate party will take place Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you have small children, they want their face painted, they want get a t-shirt with autographs from the players and cheerleaders and so forth. The band will be there. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, this is about the 22nd year, yeah. I think, or 23rd year that we have done this tailgate party to open up the home season. Uh, so, look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, it's kind of a double header for us at the high school. Marshall County's coming to play us in volleyball. So if you really want to take in the experience, uh, our volleyball team's on play earlier that mm -hmm. afternoon against Marshall County, and then we will um, have the football game that night. Now, is that girls volleyball or boys? Girls volleyball. Or is there a boys There's volleyball? not a boys volleyball in our okay. state. Okay. Just girls. There you go. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to, let's see, what is it? Something Academy, Academy School, Maplewood, uh, not Maplewood, but Marshall County played them. Columbia Academy. Columbia Academy beat them 41 to 14. Shelbyville played them and beat them. No. Marshall County beat them 48 to 14. Shelbyville beat them 41 to 14. Uh, so, Shelbyville beat them 48 22 last night. Marshall beat them 41 7, I think, last so, week. So that just sort of gives you a little bit of indication how we played Shelbyville and, and uh, lost by one score, which was a block field goal. And Marshall County and Shelbyville seemed to be sort of close to ability. Yeah, I would, the same I, would team. Think, I would think they're they're very much alike. Yeah, so and, uh, it'll be a, it'll be a great ball game. Hope so. And we need to we, win, and we need you in the stand. So, first home game Thursday night, seven o'clock. You be there, and we will be back next Saturday. Hello to the Hollinsworth bunch over there. Hope Dad's feeling better today, and uh, thank our sponsors. Because without them, we wouldn't be here and our great football coach and the coaches that surround him and the facilities and all the help that it puts on not only the games but the quarterback club and everybody that helps this team function and become a community pride which is what it is we'll see you next time